Hi everyone, this is Holly from Hot Humble Pie. Welcome to my channel if you're new, and a big warm hello to my subscribers. I love you guys. Well today I am bringing you some primitive patriotic rustic DIYs, and as always, I hope you enjoy the show. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you click that button. This is a Dollar Tree item that I got that I've kind of been picking apart for different DIYs and I thought it would be totally cute for the style I'm going for right now. Now I'm going to start covering the stripes with some red paint to cover up that glitter. It's a little too flashy for the style. And I'm using Apple Barrel Paint in the color Candy Apple. I'm also going to be covering up those white stripes with more Apple Barrel Paint in Antique Parchment to tone them down as well. And I did want to mention if you guys do want to sand off the glitter Glitter, be sure to throw it away in your trash can and not in the you know down the sink or wash it down the gutter or whatever I guess the glitter is going into the oceans and it's killing our sea life because obviously it's difficult to breathe with billions of little pieces of plastic floating around so I just want to pass it on because a lot of crafters don't know this and so definitely throw your glitter away and get it into the landfill where it belongs so now I'm taking some of the antique parchment I'm just doing a light dry brushing over the top this actually came out so awesome looking you guys it kind of looks like blue jeans and I think it's because I painted over the glitter it has like a texture to it and the whole denim look is just perfect for the whole look that I'm going for so I'm using some of those towering blocks from the Dollar Tree and I'm just making a little stand for the back of it to hold it up I'm also using Dollar Tree candle holders there those little tiny half ones and this little glass dish at the top here is also in the candle section at the Dollar Tree and I use some super glue by Gorilla. It's Gorilla glue but it's a super glue and hot glue both together to glue that down and now I'm just dry brushing with a little bit of the elephant gray also an apple barrel paint to kind of distress this and make it look awesome. Isn't that awesome? And that's going to be my little base for my flag. I actually used that in an Easter project for an egg and because Easter's over we're using it for this so it worked perfect. Taking a little bit of the raffia I got on Amazon. Love that stuff. It's down below in my description box if you're interested. I'm using a little bit of Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to kind of like open it in the middle there so that the back of those little towering blocks can sit right there so it stays standing up. You see what I'm doing right there. So I'm still having trouble getting it to stand so I do end up taking another towering block and gluing it at an angle just so it leans back a little bit because because I think that looks better. But I was actually shocked at how cute this DIY came out. It's perfect for what I'm going for. Let me know what you guys think. This heart is actually from Walmart for a dollar, but the Dollar Tree also carries those little wooden hearts. And then there's this rustic flag printable. You will find it down below in my description box. It's a free printable for you. Just click on the link and it will take you right to it. It's printed on regular computer paper because when I tried to do it on tissue paper on another wood project, it got a little bit darker than I wanted. So I went ahead and printed it up again on regular computer paper, glued it down with a Dollar Tree glue stick. Any glue stick will work. And then took a nail file here it's a really rugged nail file like for acrylic nails and I went ahead and I filed off the edges of the paper I'm using some of the apple barrel paint in antique parchment again it's one of my favorite colors and I'm gonna go ahead and distress this heart using that because remember we're going for like a primitive look or a very rustic look I usually never decorate for the 4th of July but I thought you know what I've been seeing a couple of looks in patriotic DIYs in magazines that I absolutely love it's my style and I thought you know what this will be fun why not so we're going for it today and this is the look I'm gonna try and create with these DIYs I'm also going to use some of the towering blocks 
for a stand. They make great little stands because you can kind of configure them and design them to, at, you know, to fit whatever you're making, to lean at any angle that you need them to lean at. I love using them for this purpose. And I'm just taking two, gluing them together, and then there's two that I'm gonna put like in an L shape, and then I'm just gonna kind of pile it up, I guess. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just like piling up three of them and then I'm gonna use the two to kind of make it like an L shape. And then fingers crossed, that's gonna work. It did work, but I didn't know at the time if it was going to work, but it did work perfectly. So there's a little bit showing with the towering blocks because they're not totally narrow. And when I tried to make it more narrow, the heart was too wobbly. So the way I'm going to fix that, I'm gonna use a little bit of Spanish moss and I'm just gonna roll it up in a ball, glue it on the bottom and then trim it really, really close to that wood and it works perfect. So I did end up painting those towering blocks in the back with antique parchment because when everything was said and done, you could totally see them still, even though the grass was on there. So be sure to paint them if you do this DIY. And I decided when it was all said and done that this little heart was missing something and I didn't have any wooden beads that were small enough. And I thought, you know what? These Mariachi beads should work great. And they did, they came up perfect. I actually love working with these. I think they're one of the most underused craft supply in the Dollar Tree, even with a little thread that attach them I still think they look so fragile and kind of a very soft garnish and a soft accent to different crafts you'll see here where I paint them they look absolutely beautiful with this piece and they really add to it And we're all done. I love, love the way this one came out. I don't know how many of you are fans of Pinterest, but I found this gal on there. She has a blog or a website called Burlap Kitchen. I absolutely love her style. If you're out there and you see this, thank you so much. You have a great imagination. Now I made this DIY. I made it a little bit differently. You always put your own twist on it, but she was definitely my inspiration. And you're going to need a Dollar Tree wooden star. So here's the deal. I accidentally deleted I did, I deleted it, I didn't lose it. I actually deleted the video with the first part of this DIY on it. It was super easy though, so it's easy to explain. But it was on the D drive, and instead of going to my recyclable bin, it just disappeared off the computer. My son spent 10 hours trying to get it, and we just couldn't. So there's your free printable paper, the stars that you're gonna need, and you're gonna need some of those towering blocks. I didn't have a crate, so I went ahead and made a crate. This is a crate that I made. I used two towering blocks in the corner, and then I just cut my craft sticks to fit. So pretty self-explanatory. Easier to do, obviously, is to go to the Dollar Tree and just buy one of their crates, which is what I think she did. But hey, I winged it because I didn't have a crate, and I really love this craft, and I wanted to make it. I'm using a star off of that Dollar Tree flag. I'm gonna go ahead and print up the distress flag again that I used for the previous craft, but this time I'm only going to use the red and white stripes. So that's the part of the video you lost, but it's very self-explanatory. I just covered the star with that. So here I am gluing the crate down on my star covered you know star covered star <laughs> and then I'm taking the little star and I did the red stripe little lines kind of sideways there I thought that was cute I'm using a votive candle that you get at the Dollar Tree and I'm just putting a little bit of hot glue just to hold it a little bit more sturdy than it was before and I am totally comfortable with using 
tea lights with real open flames in anything that escapes the heat. Like it's not really a fire hazard. Any candle is a fire hazard if you walk away from it. So I never walk away from mine. So I'm very comfortable. If you're not, you can always get an electrical little tea light from the Dollar Tree. They sell those. And then I just added some of the Dollar Tree floral moss, not the reindeer moss because it doesn't smell as bad. <laughs> and some of the boxwood that I got from Amazon, but you can get that at Walmart as well. I'm going to light this up and I think this came up absolutely beautiful. I love this DIY and I would love to hear from you guys. What, what, what do you guys think? This next DIY I actually featured in my pizza pan, my summer pizza pan craft video. And this was such a huge hit that it definitely belongs in a patriotic video if you are looking for ideas for 4th of July decor. So, and this is also summer decor too, because that's the season, I guess, for the 4th of July. But I just took some Rust-Oleum chalk paint because that is a very nice, strong chalk paint that doesn't require a primer. I painted two coats of it on the back side of the pizza pan. I actually have decided I prefer the back side of the pizza pan for these types of projects. So I'm now using the apple barrel paint in candy apple and I'm doing some red stripes and I am painting them down the sides because you are gonna see that a little bit with this craft. I don't worry if it gets a little sloppy on the ledge there because I'm going to go ahead and cover the ledge with a trim, but I am careful to do the sides and I'm just kind of touching everything up to make it nice and neat. Next, I'll do some dry brushing with white paint to tone this red down. That's the look again I love. That's the look I'm going for. It's a very soft subtle rustic I actually think like the old flag you know if you found like an antique flag whatever that feeling is you get when you see things that look kind of old and worn I think it's perfect for the 4th of July decor at least for me when I do the 4th of July I'm not going to do anything really really loud everything's going to be really soft and muted so I found this at the Dollar Tree it was like a little welcome sign with a truck on it there with the flag and again I'm using this star now on this craft I just use this star as a template to trace a star that's all I'm gonna do and I'm gonna go ahead and lay my truck down and trace my star and then we're gonna go ahead and paint the star blue so I will tell you ahead of time because I had a lot of questions about this I uh, when I go to trace the star blue I am using a chalk pen it's from like a bright bold chalk marker set which my son-in-law got at Walmart but for whatever reason I don't think this blue is bright and bold I actually think it's a very soft blue it was a perfect blue I was looking for very much like a denim color and when I was all done coloring it in because it was kind of a dry chalky type paint I guess it naturally distressed itself as you can see I didn't even need to do anything I just think this came up so perfect it looks almost like a I think I mentioned in the last video it was like a denim look or maybe even like velvety it's just perfect for this craft Now I'm going to go ahead and add some of the Dollar Tree nautical rope around the edge and later you'll see me add another strand because I do decide that this craft needs a little bit more than just one strand. I just wanted to take it up a notch and make it look that much better. So I do end up adding some more nautical rope down the road. I'm using some patriotic ribbon that I found at Hobby Lobby 50% off. I bought the navy blue ticking stripe and then the regular old like flag stripes and stars ribbon right there. And I'm just going to tie a simple bow in the middle with some of the raffia I got from Amazon. I've also mentioned that in a couple of videos. I love that stuff. It's really strong, kind of performs more like a ribbon, but it's raffia. I guess maybe the hula skirt at the Dollar Tree is kind of similar, only this is a lot, lot stronger. And so then I decide to wrap the red around, you know, because it comes in red, green, and that, you know, the classic raffia, which is kind of that light brown color. 
And then I decide to wrap it around my fingers right here and I'm going to tie it and kind of make like a tassel type thing. But I decide to cut the ends of it to make like a spray formation because in my mind I was trying to emulate like the feeling of those banners that are like a half circle or maybe even fireworks exploding. I just wanted to kind of give it an energy there that was different than just a bow on top. So there I go. I'm gluing it on the top. And then I'm going to glue that fabric bow on top of that. Now, if you want to know how I make my bows, I do have a video called 10 Bow Hacks. It pretty much covers every single bow I make in every single video so that I don't have to do individual tutorials each time. It is time stamped, so you can just go through and see which bow you'd like to learn more about. Click on that time and it will take you right to it. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. Oh, and that, I'm sorry. That will, the link for that is always in my description box. I'm just going to always put it there because that way you can find your bows. <laughs> and I'm going to take some raw feet to tie this in, you guys, because after I did that, I thought, well, that looks kind of plain, Holly. So I'm taking just some more of the raffia. I wrapped it up to make a raffia bow, and I'm going to glue that on top of the fabric bow. And it just looks so, so cute. It ties everything in. Now here's the Dollar Tree truck again, and I love these little metal things, but for my taste, they're a little shinier than I'm comfortable with. So what I did, well, what I usually do and did is that I take white paint. You can also use like an antique parchment, just a light paint. And I'm basically rubbing it on and rubbing it off. I'm dry brushing it so much that it's so dry that there's very little left behind. What is left behind is actually very beautiful. It adds to the piece. But the goal here is to remove all of the shine on top of the metal. I just think that kind of makes it look more rustic and ties it in with the entire look. So see that hole on the top of the hood there? That did end up driving me nuts. Two days later, I didn't film it. I don't know why I didn't. I just, I guess I did it for myself and I totally forgot. I'm sorry, you guys, but I did end up filling that in with spackling. Easy enough to do once it's glued down. And then I painted it blue, did a little dry brushing to camouflage it and it looked great. You can do that too. And I am using Gorilla Glue to glue that truck down. So make sure you use a high quality hot glue if you're gonna glue it down or use a cold glue. And there I go, I'm gluing my second row of nautical rope on the edge of the border. I really think that made it look so much better. It came up absolutely beautiful. I end up using a little bit of fire, I always do, to burn off the hair hair because those little nautical ropes are furry <laughs> and I actually like it when it gets charred a little bit that doesn't bother me I think it adds to the whole look but let me know what you think So this is another little primitive star that I actually made from my absolute best craft stick video. And I just want to show you how I made it. Totally easy to do, but it makes a wonderful frame to do other things with it. And I knew when I was done with it and I looked at it over a couple weeks, I thought, you know what? You could make that way more awesome. So you start off by just making your star and gluing the craft sticks on top of each other. You can see what I'm doing here. I think I used a whole package from the Dollar Tree when I was all done. I used up the entire package and it was about two and a half, no, probably two and a quarter inches thick. So it's a really nice, heavy wooden star but you can wrap it in twine, you can wrap it in burlap. I ended up taking this and wrapping it in yarn. And well, I'm showing you the whole process. I made these bows first because I actually tied this on the star and then I'm gonna take it off and you'll see what I do next. So that was how I ended up making the bow for this DIY but this is the clip that got deleted along with the other stuff when I thought I was deleting off of the cloud. I went ahead and took some white yarn and just started wrapping up this star. I would have actually probably preferred burlap but I didn't have any so I used what I had. It still came up totally cute and then I took some of these wooden beads. I thread them on the raffia and then the two stars that I have next here right there 
I paint one red with candy apple and apple barrel paint, and then I use that chalk marker again and make the other one that blue, distress them with white paint, hang them on the wooden beads, and we end up with a totally beautiful upgraded version of this star, which actually my neighbor has on her door. This is another burlap kitchen inspired craft only I'm making uh, you know it different I'm obviously making it for like a smaller version here a tiered tray but you can make this DIY in any size you can do it with a piece of two by four all the way up to a huge piece of wood I just wanted my dinky for my tiered tray so I'm taking the towering blocks I'm gonna glue three of them together I hope you could see, you can see what I did there working with towering blocks is difficult because you actually have to see a visual but I took threes like that, piled them on top of each other, and I just did two rows of those and then glued that together so it makes it a lot thicker. And that's how we made that. And then I'm going to use this star uh, print up again because it's perfect for the primitive look I'm going for. And I'm going to cover the half bottom part of this little towering block formation thing here. I'm just using a glue stick. I like the glue stick because it doesn't leave wrinkles and it just works really well for me. I haven't had any bad luck with it so far. I mean, if you're gonna glue fabric down or something like that, you probably definitely have to use, you have to go for your bigger guns, the Mod Podge, but if you're just using paper or tissue paper, glue stick nine out of 10 times works brilliantly. And so you can see here, I'm just folding it over the edge. And at the top, I used again, the Apple Barrel, paint in the candy apple red and I did little stripes on the top and then I'm just taking some white paint and that one is also just apple barrel brand and I'm filling in in between the little white stripes now I'm painting the little middle part there white but I do end up going over it with a second coat in the antique parchment just to tone it down a little bit and make it a little bit more warm and that's what we have so far and then I take a craft stick, I cut it a little bit, you know, at the edge there. Well, we're making a little Uncle Sam here. That's what it is. So that's going to be the ledge of his hat there, that craft stick I just cut and painted white. And then I decide I want my little striped hat to go all the way around the sides as well. So I end up painting the white. And while it's drying, I start painting this little part here that's going to be the rim of his hat. I'm just using some of the apple barrel paint in burnt umber and I'm distressing the edges. So you can see I dry brushed it with white paint just to kind of give it a soft little hue there of just a little like almost whitewash of white paint and I'm distressing it now with the burnt umber. And in pencil I'm going to write the um, 1776 on there, right there and I'm gonna trace it in the furniture marker in black. You can use a permanent black marker, whatever you want. That's just what I had on hand. And now that my white paint is dry, I'm gonna go ahead and finish my little stripes up the side of his hat. Using a little bit of hot glue, I'm going to glue the rim of his hat on at a slight angle. And here comes the antique parchment. I'm gonna just put that on nice and soft. I just felt like if that was gonna be his face, I wanted to tone it down just a little bit again to kind of help it tie in with the rest of the decor I've done. And then I wrapped some twine at the bottom and I glued a little wood bead for his nose. I used some of the Spanish moss to make a beard. And then I took a permanent marker for his eyes and used two towering blocks on the back so he could stand up. And I love this one. This is a great tiered tray decor piece. If you had fun today and enjoyed the video, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. And until the next one, breathe deep, fret not, and do things that make you happy.